What's going on guys? Uh, here's a little update on my 2001 Ram 1500. I'll kind of give you a walkthrough about everything I've done to it. Uh, I think I have 12,000 miles on it right now and about 10,000 miles on the the lowering kit. In the back here, I actually have a bed rug, bed tread it's called. Um, it's a mat that slides in here. Um, you can get the optional sides here and basically is a whole bed liner that slides in and out. And it's nice and foam and then there's a uh, foam underneath that's cut out for the the bed shape. Uh, it also has this nice little net so when you're handling uh, lawn stuff nothing falls down there. I've uh, been hauling dirt bikes, motorcycles with it for over a year and it's held up really good. Cheap little tri-fold vinyl cover. I love these covers because you can take them on and off when you throw on your bikes and you don't have any rails here. Now I debadged everything so that it this 50 horsepower Mopar performance badge. Underneath here we have our carbon 5 inch tips on both sides with our B2 resonator deletes. And then also for the airbags I have in the back, I have my air airport right there. Coming around here, uh, my Vossen 22 inch wheels wrapped with 305 22s. I didn't like the offset of these with these OEM flares. They stuck in too far. So what I did was I opted for some Bora spacers. They are uh, 1.25 inches. And as you can see, these wheels have a cutout in them. The stock wheels also have a cutout, so you can actually run these with stock wheels too. I could have went with a smaller spacer if I wanted to. But what this spacer did was, it got me perfectly flush with my flares. Also inside here, you can see back there, we have our airbags. And then our Bilstein 5100 shocks with our lowering kit. Coming up here, um, there's the Recon LED third brake light. With this third brake light, you don't have any key fob interference issues like you do when you put LED bulbs in the stock housing. Also, no leaks. Inside is pretty much stock, except I have my switch for my front light bar mounted right here. Over here, we have my other 50 horsepower mod. Uh, it's a start-stop switch out of a TRX. Down here, we have my EVC throttle controller. Um, I usually keep it about on three. It works very well. Other than that, all stock. Again, debadged. Uh, front spacers, I, they're the exact same size as the back spacer. I know some people like to stagger their spacers, um, but what I found still fits perfectly. Coming around here, you can actually see the light bar behind this grill. It's a Shifts and Grins fabrication light bar bracket basically snap in this hollow grill and then uh, they come with the brackets and you can put whatever 30 inch light bar you want in there that one is a single row rough country one i believe we have our smb intake um it didn't do anything for performance it's mainly just for looks i got a super good deal in the form i think i paid 100 bucks for it and then we have our Mishimoto oil catch can. It's not as important on these engines as it is like the Chevy direct injection engines, but I have collected a bunch of crap. It just saves assurance for a clean under the engine. Um, this truck is the e-torque equipped truck. I've not really experienced any issues with it. Everything works flawlessly. And here's all the wiring stuff for the uh, light bar. So it's with this lowering kit, a lot of people said they had wear issues with their tires. So what I did was I set it to 1.5 inches instead of doing the full 2 inches. And as you can see, I have, I think I keep 5 PSI in the bags and it sits damn near perfectly level. I didn't want to go too much lower. See some good in there. Because this truck is four-wheel drive and I didn't want my CV angle to be that much worse than what it is in the opposite direction of doing a normal leveling kit. And with about 10,000 miles on the tires, when I took them off to rotate them, there was absolutely no wear on the insides. So I'm not concerned about my alignment. That's it. Uh, and also, yes, the uh, I did the gloss it. Paint correction with their uh, DIY, that's not graphite coating. And so far it's working pretty good. Whenever you wash the truck, you really don't have to touch it. You just air dry it and it doesn't leave any marks. Give you guys a little sound clip of this exhaust. Oh, and it has a carbon cut and clamp as well. Forgot about that little part. So I'll give you a sound clip of the exhaust here. Just 
so get on her. So all the windows are up, and this is the carbon exhaust, the loudest one they have. In here, it's still pretty quiet in here. And if I can find the video, I'll uh, splice at the end of this video, shooting up the mountain, kind of show you how well this thing handles with the being.